I want you to hit me as hard as you can. My name is Jean-Claude Van Damme. I used to be super famous. He claims he can crack walnuts with his butt cheeks. He's a real-life Johnny Cage, and he loves that cocaine. Well, he used to. Jean-Claude Van Damme is one of the greatest action heroes to ever grace the silver screen. But a lot of people are split on how they feel about this legend. Is Mr. Jean-Claude Van Damme an athletic wonder that deserves decades of admiration? Is he a washed-up has-been whose ego sent him on a slow and painful death to the bottom of the directed DVD bargain barrel? Or is he a beautiful, talented artist who uses cinema and martial arts to express his soul to the universe and beyond? Or is he just a badass who sometimes makes some pretty cool flicks? Or all of the above? I'm gonna say all of the above. Yeah, that, that seems like the best answer. In Hollywood, we often see action stars that aren't exactly what they seem. A pretty face for the camera, while the stuntman comes in and does all the dirty work. The real work. Jean-Claude Van Damme is not one of those action stars. He's the real deal. A kickboxing and bodybuilding champion that could do a standing kick seven feet in the air and then immediately do the splits and then get you right where the sun don't shine. Ouch. He has made some really good films and some not so good ones too. But such is life. Kicking, controversy, and confrontation follow this man around every corner, in the movies and in real life. Even though he's had his ups and downs, I still admire this man. In fact, it's his ups and downs that make him more interesting. He was just a skinny nerd who learned some karate, then took over the world. I even named my first car in high school after him, Jean-Claude Grandam, because I was that cool. But how is JCVD doing now? Is his career on a downfall? Or is he in the middle of a comeback? And you know what, it's actually kinda hard to tell with him. But that's why we love us some Jean-Claude. And that's why we ask the tough questions. Like what the f happened to Jean-Claude Van Damme? <laughs> to truly understand what the f happened to Jean-Claude Van Damme, we must start at the beginning. And the beginning began when he was born on his birthday, Brussels, Belgium. His nickname was the Muscles from Brussels, because those muscles, well, they were born in Brussels. Young Jean-Claude began his martial arts career at the young age of 10. To go along with his martial arts training, Van Damme took up weightlifting and ballet. And he said if you could survive a ballet workout, you can survive a workout from any sport. And all of that work paid off when he became Mr. Belgium in a bodybuilding contest. Congratulations, sir. Wow, look at all of that that body that has that he's built. Van Damme would then go on to conquer the world of kickboxing, knocking out like all of his opponents. He had a near perfect 18 in 1 record. Jean-Claude Van Damme kickboxing champion. Even though Joe Rogan doubts it, but uh, he, he has that guy to Google it for him, so... He has a kickboxing record. No, he does not. Yes, he, has he a does. a point karate fighting background. He has a kickboxing uh, record. Uh, Jamie? Van Damme retired from competition in 1982, and that same year he decided to move to the United States of America in hopes of becoming an actor. Jean-Claude was breaking into showbiz as a background dancer in the 1984 breakdancing classic, Break In. And it was around this time that Jean-Claude Van Damme became sparring partners with the one, the only, Chuck Norris, and even worked as a bouncer in Norris's bar. That friendship led to Chuck Norris putting Van Damme on the stunt team for his film Missing in Action which led to a small, uncredited role as a soldier. 
It took a few years before Van Damme would get his big break, playing the Russian villain in No Retreat, No Surrender in 1986. Several of the cast members complained about Van Damme saying that he had no control over his martial arts and would continuously kick them in the face. And of course the film has an amazing riff track from those Mystery Science Theater 3000 guys. Then came the year 1987, the year of the Predator. Due to his martial arts background and agile movements, Van Damme was cast in the role of the Predator in Predator. But he was fired, or quit, depending on who you ask. And like I said, there's a number of conflicting stories about Jean-Claude Van Damme and the Predator. Some say he told producers that the suit was too hot and he was passing out while filming. Arnold Schwarzenegger called him a relentless complainer. And some say that Jean-Claude Van Damme thought that Predator was going to be his huge breakout role, but hated that he had to conceal his face. Because how can your face become famous if people don't see it? Producer Joel Silver clashed with Jean-Claude Van Damme because the actor insisted that the Predator should have some kickboxing skills, because why not? And when the filmmakers watched the dailies, they just didn't feel like little Jean-Claude was an imposing threat on those beefcake governors. So yeah, get out of there, Jean-Claude Van Damme. Go do other things. We, 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 we have another path for you. I didn't realize that he was just... <laughs> kind of a stuntman, right? <laughs> we get him out there for the first shot and he's just seething. Van Damme's first big starring role came in 1988 with the martial arts film classic, Bloodsport. Freaking awesome movie. The film's fight choreographer, Frank Dux, who the movie is based on, loosely or not at all, said that when Van Damme was cast, he was not in good enough shape to convincingly play the role. So he put him on an intense three-month training schedule that Van Damme called the hardest training of his life. And it paid off because, like I said, Bloodsport is awesome. Frickin' awesome. And the film is based on a true story, even though there's absolutely no evidence that any of this ever happened to this guy, but let's just pretend it did because that makes everything cooler. Yeah, Bloodsport, based on a true story, yeah! The video game Mortal Kombat was inspired by this film, with the Johnny Cage character of course being based upon Jean-Claude, who was asked to be the video game character but, but, but turned it down. Van Damme actually helped edit Bloodsport. Usually it's not such a good idea to let the actor edit the movie, but in the case of Bloodsport it worked. The film was actually a sizable hit, pulling in $50 million worldwide on a $2 million budget. But those pesky critics found the story cliched and the acting subpar. Yet they found the fighting and the action to be very exciting. Unfortunately, Van Damme would be nominated for Worst New Star at the Razzies. They don't know what they're talking about because they're just, they're just raspberries. Raspberries don't know anything. Neither do tomatoes. He would return to the villain role for his next movie, Black Eagle, in 1988. Then came the following year, 1989. And that was the year of the cyborg. The film's production company, Canon Films, was originally going to make a sequel to Masters of the Universe as well as a live-action Spider-Man film, intending to shoot both films at the same time using the same director. They built several sets for the films, Masters of the Universe 2 and Spider-Man, but when the company ran into some financial troubles, they had to back out of those films. And since they are canon films, they decided they did not want to waste the two million dollars they already invested in those sets. So they had the director write another story in a single weekend that could put all of the sets to use. And that is how Cyborg was made. <laughs> Oh, my God.
they originally wanted Chuck Norris to star in the film, but because of the success of Bloodsport, Cannon offered Van Damme a chance to pick what project he wanted to do next, and he chose Cyborg. Although he later admitted that he didn't like the film very much. But I have to disagree, Mr. Van Damme, I like this film very, very much. The camera work is so, like, gritty and raw and beautiful, it feels like... It feels like you're actually in a post-apocalyptic world and that the film like went through the wasteland and that the cameras they're just they're just barely working and and it, it, it's just struggling you, you can you can feel the low budget magic it's it's truly an amazing experience or maybe I'm just going crazy cyborg it's it's great but yeah cyborg it made 10 million dollars Pretty damn good for a cyborg. Jean Claude Van Damme would come up with the story for his next film, Kickboxer. But yeah, Kickboxer, it's just one of those perfect Jean Claude Van Damme movies that wouldn't work with anyone else. It's like right here, this. This right here is what he was made to do. Van Damme choreographed and directed all the fight scenes in the film. But those pesky critics, they called the film an R-rated Karate Kid ripoff, claiming that Van Damme was a low-budget Schwarzenegger wannabe. Well... <laughs> I think you're a low-budget Schwarzenegger wannabe, you critics who don't like Kickboxer. And of course, we have to mention Van Damme's little dance sequence in there. It has become a popular meme, and the actor even recreated it on the Conan O'Brien show. Van Damme would kick off the new decade playing a paratrooper who enters underground fight clubs. In the movie Lionheart, Van Damme once again came up with the story and choreographed the fights. The film was a profitable endeavor as it made $24 million on a $6 million budget. Cha-ching! Also in that same year, 1990, Van Damme would star in Death Warrant as a cop who infiltrates a prison to find out why so many people are being murdered or something. Death Warrant pulled in $16 million off a $6 million budget, domestically. But much like many other Jean-Claude Van Damme films, the critics were not fans of this one. But I don't care what the critics think, even though I keep talking about them. Come on! <laughs> then, the next year, 1991, came Double Impact. Van Damme would produce choreograph and co-write this story about twins separated at birth who reunite to avenge their parents' murder. And he said that he wanted to do a movie that would show off how well-rounded of a performer he is, and not just an ass-kicker. And he actually studied Jeremy Irons' dual role performance in Dead Ringers and says it was a huge influence on making this film. Audiences again seem to enjoy this one with a B-plus cinema score, if you trust those cinema scores, while those pesky critics did not like the plot. For some reason, they focus on important things like the plot. <laughs> Next up, he would star in the film Universal Soldier. The film pulled in just shy of $100 million worldwide at the box office with a $23 million budget. Critics dismissed this film as just a Terminator 2 ripoff, but, uh, you know, they're wrong. And at the 1992 Cannes Film Festival, because when you think Universal Soldier, you think Cannes Film Festival, Van Damme and co-star Dolph Lundgren were seen having a loud fight that was turning physical. They were eventually separated by security. The fight became the talking point of the festival, and all the media outlets were chatting about it. Universal Soldier was in the headlines. It almost seemed too good to be true because it was. Years later, Mr. Dolph confessed that the entire thing 
was just a setup to promote the film. Van Damme would next be seen in Nowhere to Run opposite Rosanna Arquette, who she said flat out did not like working with Van Damme. The original script was said to be more character driven with zero action scenes, but then Jean-Claude Van Damme was cast and you can't cast Jean-Claude Van Damme without some Van Damme action scenes. And because of this, the filmmakers have completely disowned the film, saying that Jean-Claude Van Damme destroyed the script. Strike three, you're out. Then in 1993, he has a fun little cameo in Last Action Hero. There it is, see, right there. Wasn't that cameo fun? Then Van Damme would showcase his divine mullet for director Jean Wu in his English language debut, Hard Target, an adaptation of the most dangerous game. Wu's original cut of the film featured more Lance Henriksen, but Van Damme took the film along with his own editor and locked themselves away for two days recutting the film to focus more on Van Damme's character. Like I said, actors in editing. Wu and Van Damme got along for the most part, with Wu saying that Van Damme has a pretty big ego, but he's still very professional and always tries to do a good job. By this time, Van Damme was his own business, and by that he had immense control over his films. And one such way that he used his control was by demanding that they always had a camera set up to capture shots of his muscles. You know, the ones from Brussels. And John Woo did not want to use any of those shots. But yeah, Jean-Claude was kind of a diva on set, often delaying shooting several times because he was on the phone with his agent negotiating other projects. Critical reception from the film was mixed, yet everyone had to agree that the technical aspects of the film are very impressive. The film made a respectable $74 million. Next up for Van Damme would ultimately become his highest grossing starring film, Time Cop, which pulled in $102 million worldwide. And naturally, this movie finds a way to, to slip in his trademark splits. Next up is a movie that if you're currently in your 30s, you look back on with fond memories as your first introduction to Van Damme. Yet if you've watched it since you were a kid, you realize that it's just a bad movie. But you still love it. It's Street Fighter. Van Damme later admitted that during production of this film, he was in the midst of a massive drug problem, spending over 10 grand a week on cocaine. <laughs> and the writer-director of Street Fighter confirmed confirmed these reports, saying that the cocaine addiction often led to Van Damme leaving set early or flat out not showing up at all. The cast and crew genuinely hated working with Van Damme, as both his ego and his substance abuse got out of control. But one person who apparently didn't mind Jean-Claude Van Damme was Kylie Minogue, who had an affair with him while filming. At the same time, his fourth wife was pregnant, just saying. The film had a $35 million budget, with $8 million going to Van Damme. In 2010, Empire Magazine ranked this film as the 27th worst film ever. And I'm going to kick that son of a bitch Bison's ass so hard that the next Bison wannabe is gonna feel it. Now, who wants to go home? And who wants to go with me? Yeah! 1995 would see Van Damme reunite with his Time Cop director for the film's sudden death, aka Die Hard at Game 7 of the Stanley Cup Finals. Schwarzenegger, Stallone, and Bruce Willis all turned down this movie. The original script had more comedic elements, yet when Van Damme was cast, the film became more of a straight-up action movie. And you know what? It's one of my favorite Van Damme movies. It's, it's really fun. Critics found that if you go into this Van Damme movie expecting a Van Damme movie, well, you'll leave the theater having a Van Damme good time while others say that this is nothing more than a die-hard ripoff. 
Yet I say this is like the best Die Hard ripoff. So that's something. And the film would make $64 million worldwide. Then came 1996 and he made some friends. And who doesn't remember Rachel and Monica trying to hit on Van Damme? In that episode of Friends that aired right after the Super Bowl titled, The One After the Super Bowl. Can't you see what's going on here? This man is dying! Then Van Damme would make his directorial debut with the movie The Quest in 1996. Van Damme originally asked Oliver Stone to direct the film, but he declined because he's Oliver Stone. So Van Damme just said, fine, Oliver Stone, I'll do it myself. But he said it with, a, with his accent. Sir Roger Moore wrote in his autobiography that this film was incredibly disorganized and that he did not like Van Damme. That seems to be a running theme. The film managed to make $57 million worldwide though, with critics generally hating it, but appreciating the production design and the various martial arts techniques showcased. Van Damme would then again play twins in the film Maximum Risk. And this film seems to be the beginning of the Van Damme slide into the direct-to-video abyss. Even though the film received a theatrical outing in the States, in many, many other territories, it was direct to the video. Then came one of the greatest on-screen collaborations of all time. Jean-Claude Van Damme and Dennis Rodman in the film Double Team. This is actually kind of a fun, silly action movie that's just, you know, it's just, it's not good, but that's, that's what makes it so good. The film won three Razzies including Worst Screen Couple. But yeah, this movie, it's its exactly what you would expect it to be. It's an action movie starring Jean-Claude Van Damme and Dennis Rodman. It made just over $11 million and doesn't really seem to have a cult following. So I'm gonna start one. Who wants to join my cult? My double team cult? That just sounds weird. Let's, let's not have a cult, I guess. I don't know, comment your comments. You guys wanna start a cult? Talk. 1998 brought us the film Knock Off. This film was another highly anticipated on-screen team-up. Jean-Claude Van Damme and Rob Schneider. A film critic at CNN, the most trusted name in news, called this film the most incomprehensible mess they ever sat through and has a D-plus on that cinema score. Van Damme's next film, Legionnaire, would be direct-to-video. He originally pitched this to the studios as a more light-hearted film that could star himself alongside John Candy, which would have been awesome, but that never happened. Critics said that the film looks good, but the acting is stiff. Then, in that year, 1998, he was diagnosed with bipolar disorder, which kind of explained a lot of his actions and behavior in the past. And Jean-Claude has always been very open about his bipolar disorder. In an interview, he just openly, honestly said, sometimes you're gonna love me, and sometimes you're gonna hate me. He calls himself, quote, extremely bipolar, and is taking medication. And once he was able to get that under control, he started to get his life and his career back on track. But his, his life was kind of more important than his movies. Don't get me wrong. Movies are important, but, you know, life. Now I'm sad. Cheer me up, Jean-Claude Van Damme. Van Damme would return to one of his breakout roles in the sequel to Universal Soldier called Universal Soldier The Return. The film was received so badly that future sequels in the franchise completely ignore it. They're like, let's just pretend number two didn't happen. Critics said that the film failed on every level and has nothing for anyone to be proud of on either side of the screen. Following that, Van Damme would appear in the music video for Crush Em by Megadeth. Then in 1999, Van Damme would finish out the damn century, starring in a movie called Inferno. And the original cut was actually test screened and had a standing ovation. 
But Van Damme did not really care about that and just chopped up the movie how he wanted to and just re-edited everything. And now we, we have Inferno. Drop it! Now turn around nice and slow like. And even though he was trying to get his life back on track, dealing with his mental health and, and things like that, he was still struggling with a major drug problem. He just loves that cocaine! And alcohol. In 1999, he was arrested for driving under the influence, while in the clutches of a 10 gram a day cocaine habit. He attempted rehab, yet was unsuccessful until one day he just said enough was enough and quit cold turkey putting his focus on exercise. Good for you, JCVD. Keep it up. Van Damme would settle into his newfound direct-to-video world for the movie Replicant, where he would yet again take on dual roles. Because what's better than one Jean-Claude Van Damme? Two Jean-Claude Van Dammes. That's the answer. Three might be too much. The film received mostly negative reviews, but many called it his best film since Bloodsport. But uh, I don't think so. He followed Replicant up with The Order. And well, that film, it's, it's about... Uh, well, how about let's just read what IMDb has to say about this one. It's a playboy criminal contacts his dad after stealing a Fabergé egg. Later, it seems his dad has gone missing in Israel, so he heads there. His disappearance is linked to a religious sect, the Order. Lots of fight and chase scenes. The year 2002 would see Van Damme appear in only one direct-to-video movie, titled Derailed, about terrorists and bioweapons, and the only person who can stop them is... Jean-Claude Van Damme, of course, why not? Van Damme actually broke his hand while filming the final sequence, still putting his blood, sweat, tears, and, and bones into his work. Van Damme would kick off 2003 by showing off his impressive dance skills in the Bob Sinclair music video for his track Kiss My Eyes. He would then appear to be in hell in in hell, about prisoners who are forced to fight to the death. That, that definitely sounds like a Jean-Claude Van Damme movie. In 2004, Van Damme would guest star on an episode of Las Vegas, where Van Damme plays himself. He's good at that, playing himself. Because he is himself. He would then have a small role in a French comedy film, Narco, and this is actually the first film that Van Damme ever appeared in where he spoke French. And now we get back to Van Damme's bread and butter. Cheesy direct-to-video action movies with taglines such as Revenge was all he had left, which comes from his 2004 movie Wake of Death. In 2006, we would see three damn films. Second in Command, The Hardcore, and Heist School. Van Damme actually reportedly took no payment for this film because he was such a fan of the script. In 2007 and 2008, we were to get two damn direct video titles, Until Death, with the tagline, Vengeance is His, and The Shepherd, Border Patrol. <laughs> And like I said, it turns out that the role JCVD was born to play, the one that would finally bring him some actual acclaim, was just him playing himself in the 2008 film JCVD. Dare I say it's a masterpiece? Dare I? Van Damme plays a semi-fictional version of himself, and as we know, celebrities breaking that fourth wall and poking fun at themselves can go either way. Sometimes you get movies like Being John Malkovich, and other times you get Ocean's 12 or something. And JCVD is definitely on the Being John Malkovich side. Yeah. Yeah. 
It's a true work of art that actually makes profound statements about celebrity and pop culture and society and the human condition and Jean-Claude himself. This was the first starring movie of his to actually get a majority of good reviews, with most people being actually surprised at how great Van Damme is. One scene in particular comes up when talking about this great film, The Monologue, where he discusses his former drug addiction and his failures and his dreams. It's a long, long scene. I think it's like seven minutes long and Van Damme does it in one single take. And it's truly beautiful. It's, it's one of the finest moments of cinema ever. And I'm not fucking around. J'y crois. C'est pas un film. C'est une réalité. Une réalité. Time Magazine ranked Van Damme's performance as the second best performance of the year, only behind Heath Ledger's Joker. And they even gave the quote, he deserves not a black belt, but an Oscar. Yeah, that's right, that's Time Magazine saying that. The real magazine of Time saying that Jean-Claude Van Damme deserves an Oscar. It's unbelievable, but I swear it, I swear it's real. And I freaking agree with them too. This is one of the finest performances ever, and it comes from a guy that just, you, it's just not known for that. But you know what, it, it, it's, it's more than, than acting. This is, this is a guy showing you just a little piece of his soul. Van Damme was nominated for Best Male Performance at the Toronto Film Critics Association. Je veux mon pognon! J'en ai marre! Je veux mon fric! Depuis hier, j'en ai marre! And now back to our regular scheduled programming, Universal Soldier Regeneration. Yes, that's right, immediately after one of the greatest performances of all time, Van Damme returns to a direct-to-video sequel. Then Van Damme's highest grossing performance came by way of voicing Master Croc in the animated sequel, Kung Fu Panda 2. This film was a massive success and took on $665.6 million worldwide. And even as a crocodile, Jean-Claude was able to squeeze in his signature splits. And despite high acclaim for his work in JCVD and his best box office numbers of his career with Kung Fu Panda 2, Van Damme would return to what he knows best, direct-to-video junk, with a movie called Assassination Games. Then British Channel ITV would chronicle Van Damme's life and potential return to kickboxing in an eight-episode documentary slash reality show called Jean-Claude Van Damme Behind Closed Doors. And this wacky, crazy reality show followed Jean-Claude Van Damme and his daily life as he was preparing and getting ready for a, for a fight that, to date, hasn't happened. Actually, Jean-Claude Van Damme has not professionally fought anyone since 1982, but, you know, there's, there's a reality show about him getting ready to fight a, an Olympian, of all people. But it didn't happen. But sometimes, you know, it's, it's the journey that, that counts. Then there was some controversy. In 2011, Van Damme, along with Hilary Swank and Seal, were involved in a nasty little scandal. When it was discovered that they were paid to attend a birthday party of the Chechnyan president, who had been accused of carrying out some really horrific human rights violations. And a lot of people all over the world found it very inappropriate for celebrities to get paid to party with this man because he was he was doing evil things. So so yeah, that was awkward. But um, eventually people just forgot about it, I guess. 2012 would be a damn good year for Dam. He would star in the direct-to-video titles Dragon Eyes, Six Bullets, and Alien Uprising, which also starred his daughter. He would also return once again to the world of those soldiers that are universal in Universal Soldier, Day of Reckoning. 
And of course, Van Damme's highest profile release of 2012 was his triumphant return to the big screen in the over-the-hill action sequel, Expendables 2. Stallone had originally offered Van Damme a role in the first Expendables, but he turned it down because he didn't see that the character had any substance. But then the film was a massive hit and Stallone was like, haha, I told you, you should have been in my movie. JCVD went method for this one, avoiding the cast and the crew in order to get into the bad guy's state of mind. Or he just didn't want to be bothered by anybody. The film was a sizable hit, pulling in $315 million worldwide. Good job, Expendables. Two. And critics actually liked the sequel a lot more than the original, saying that it had a better sense of humor than the first one. Then in 2012, Jean-Claude Van Damme got a huge honor. Belgium erected a life-size statue of Van Damme. Van Damme says that the statue does not represent the movie star, rather a guy from the streets who believed in something. And he hopes that people look at this and are inspired. Cause yeah, art's supposed to inspire people. Even if it's a statue of Jean-Claude Van Damme. Then came a movie called Enemies Closer. And has pretty solid reviews, people saying that it's an enjoyable B-movie. Van Damme would then be in a movie called Welcome to the Jungle. I haven't seen this one, but I hear it's kind of fun. It looks fun, and this one actually won outstanding achievement in filmmaking and ensemble cast at the Newport Beach Film Festival, if that means anything. But yeah, Welcome to the Jungle kind of looks like, you know, he still got it. <laughs> then, in 2013, Van Damme did one of the most amazing things ever done, ever. He did his famous splits between two trucks. And yes, I know this is just a viral advertisement for trucks, but this, this is so much more. This simple yet beautiful shot is just the ultimate image of perfection of man and machine working together and it's almost so beautiful that it's hilarious and silly like it makes you laugh and it makes you stare in awe with wonder like this this is this is one of the greatest things ever and i, I truly mean that like i i i could i could watch this all day long and and, and just like this is changing my life right now. I have I have no way to describe it like this. I'm at a loss for words because this this there's no special effects. This is real. This right here is proof that Jean-Claude Van Damme is the ultimate badass. Then came the year 2014 and Van Damme would team up with Funny or Die to make JCVD's Make My Movie Challenge where Jean-Claude Van Damme just did his thing in front of a green screen and they gave it to filmmakers and just said, hey, do your thing. You, you make a Jean-Claude Van Damme movie. Here, here he is. And some of the results were hilarious. Run for your life, I'll cover you! Then there was another direct-to-video movie called Swelter and something called Pound of Flesh. He also appeared alongside Charlie Sheen in the music video for The Hum and some pretty amazing Coors Light commercials. He would then return to the world of talking animals for the animated sequel Kung Fu Panda 3. And with its $521 million gross, this is Van Damme's second highest grossing movie. What? As we all know, in Hollywood, no franchise can remain dormant forever. And in 2016, Van Damme would return to the world of Kickboxer, albeit in a different role, for the reboot, Kickboxer Vengeance, and its sequel, Kickboxer Retaliation, which also has the distinction of being his best reviewed film to date. It currently has 92 of those Rotten Tomato things, if you care about those Rotten Tomato things. Granted, it's just from a limited pool of 13 reviews, but whatever. T tomatoes. 
he would show up in the premiere episode of the second season of Sense8 on Netflix. Do you have Netflix? Then in the year 2016, Van Damme would then try his hand at leading a TV series. He teamed up with Amazon and brought us the show Jean-Claude Van Johnson, where he would play himself, only it turns out that Van Damme the movie star was just cover for Van Johnson, who's actually a secret agent. The show worked really well at poking fun at Van Damme's earlier reputation as an egomaniac, and it showed that he had matured from his younger days and was able to poke fun at himself. That's the key to all of this. You gotta be able to have a sense of humor about your status of celebrity. That's the secret right there. That's the WTF secret. Just be able to laugh at your WTFness, and then you'll become a legend. And even though it was great, unfortunately Jean-Claude Van Johnson was canceled after only six episodes. Too bad, because it's pretty great. Oh yeah, and he did a really strange GoDaddy commercial. Y'all remember that one? In the last few years, we would see several more damn direct-to-video titles, such as Kill 'Em All, Black Water, The Bouncer, aka Lucas, which actually had decent reviews, We Die Young, which actually received several nominations at the Mammoth Film Festival, including Best Actor for Damn. And he actually has a movie just around the corner, The Last Mercenary, on Netflix, if you have Netflix. And in 2020, he was doing some stuff. He was he was putting his dance skills to good use in a in a music video by Aaron. And he's supposed to be in Minions: Rise of Gru. Oh, I didn't mean to scare you. Now, where's Gru? <laughs> Jean-Claude Van Damme was just a kid from Brussels with big dreams. He worked hard and achieved those dreams, but along the way his ego took center stage, resulting in people just not wanting to work with him. He became notorious for being difficult to work with. But as often happens, with age comes wisdom, and he was able to see that maybe he took himself a bit too seriously. And in the past several years, he has been able to poke fun of himself and his image, allowing all of us to see a whole new Jean-Claude, who's just as awesome, maybe even better than ever. And he did all of this while overcoming mental illness, substance abuse, and the Green Ranger. Don't try to punk me. Jason, go, Jason. Come on, let's go. Let's go, let's go, let's go. Let's go. His films are often of the mindless action type. Not that there's anything wrong with that, but within that filmography, there is a great example of the performer that Jean-Claude Van Damme can be. In that movie, JCVD, it wasn't just a movie. It was more. It was a man on a screen telling the world that this is truly who he is and what he can do which is the best way to expose your soul and demons through the art of cinema, taking things to a whole new level beyond the screen. And a million billion direct-to-video turds can never ruin that legacy. So nobody should give a fuck about what the fuck happened to Jean-Claude Van Damme. He's still kicking ass, still making films, and I cannot wait to see and or feel what he is gonna kick us in the face with next. So thank you Jean-Claude Van Damme for bringing us those great movies and all that other stuff you did. So let us end this what the fuck video about Jean-Claude Van Damme with a quote from a prince. Jean-Claude Van Damme I'm fine! <laughs>Thank you for watching our show. If you like what you see, please subscribe to our Joe Blow Videos channel. Tell your friends who like this sort of content and turn on the bell to receive notifications for all our latest videos. We're an independent company and we appreciate all your support.